Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to today's Sunday School Online Service. My name is Darnell B. Joel, and I'm so excited to be your presenter for today. But before we get right into the program, shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for preparing our minds, oh God, to concentrate to today's program. Lord, we thank you but that be at the center of this program and we submit and uh, give everything that will be learning today into your holy hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So right now, we're going to have Bible story followed by praise and worship. Keep watching. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Put on your armor, guy. Put on your armor, guy. Put on your armor, guy. You got your armor, guy. Got, got my belt of truth, check. Breastplate of righteousness. Shoes of peace. Shield of hate. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit. Helmet of salvation. Sword of the spirit.
Wow, pretty sure you all enjoyed the worship, the praise and worship. And I'm so excited to let you know that we're going next to the memory verse followed by, you know what time is it? Fun time! Hey. Welcome to today's fun time. Uh, my name is Tita Precious. Um, today's fun time, remember, we're talking about the blood of Jesus and we're going to do something similar to the blood of Jesus and what the blood of Jesus do to us as the children of God. Okay? So, for today's fun time, you need two pieces of plain paper. Like this, two pieces of plain papers. You need, sorry, let me get my box. So you need two pieces of plain papers. You need a scissors or anything that you can use to cut. You need a mix of papers, different colors. For those who like pink, girls, pink, boys, blue. Okay, so you need these. Okay, you need a paper glue, you can use something like this, a water glue or a wax glue like this, but it should be a paper glue. You also need a pen or a pencil to make it more colorful. Depending on what kind of paper you're using. Some papers, you won't need pens, you need pencils. Some, you need pens and not pencils. So I'm just going to have this unpacked from my box. Okay, so let me just put this down. Okay, so you need a plain paper. Remember, I said two pieces of plain papers. Uh, a scissors or anything you can use to cut, a cutter, a paper glue, either water glue or wax glue. And you need any piece of paper, any piece of manila paper, which you can cut into smaller pieces as I have done. As you can see, these are two small uh, pieces, different colors, depending on the, on the color that you prefer or color that you want. So on this paper, remember today's topic, our emphasize is the blood of Jesus. So we are talking about what the blood of Jesus does to us and what it came to do on the cross, okay? So on this paper, you're going to draw a cross, okay? On this plain paper, you're going to draw a cross and you're going to write uh, the common sins that we make as human uh, in our day-to-day -day life. So on my piece of paper, I've written on top, uh, the blood of Jesus covers our sins. Jesus' blood covers our sins. So on my cross, if you can see, I've drawn a cross and inside the cross, I've written the sins that I personally feel like I make. So one of them on this paper, you see the first one is lying. Lying is very common, stinginess, uh, criticism, bitterness, selfishness, envy, disobedience, uh, stealing, greedy, evil thoughts, and pride. These are the sins, my sins, okay? So you can get your piece of paper, write the cross, and write the sins that you feel you commit in your day-to-day -day life. This is one of them. So I'll put this away, okay? I have two pieces of paper. I've written other things that I commit on this other part of the paper. And there's hatred, jealous, uh, hypocrisy, stealing, unforgiveness, wrath, prejudice, envy, and deceit. So these are, again, my sins. So what you're going to do with this piece of paper, I'll show you another way you can just do this. You can either do this. This is simpler. This is why we need this scissors, okay? So you get your piece of paper. You get your piece of paper like this, and you're going to cut this paper into a cross. So you're going to get your scissors, and you begin to cut like that. You begin to cut, depending on how you want your cross to look like, you cut like that and like that okay i hope you're seeing what i'm doing so you cut on the sides 
cut on the side you also cut on the other side to make a cross so you can make this cross as pretty as you would want it to be depending on the shape and the size what you prefer so this is the way you cut your cross you cut on this side Remember, we're talking about the blood of Jesus and we all know that this blood was shed for us on the cross of Calvary. So we are cutting, making this paper into a cross, the cross of Calvary where these sins, uh, where this blood was shed for us for our justification and for our cleansing. Okay, so this is how we cut this. Quickly, Okay, and here we go. So I have this cross. So you can make your cross on a plain paper like this, or you can cut your cross like this. Okay, so the, the key thing you are going to do is that either shapes you decide this, this type or this type, you're going to write your scenes on both papers. So if you decide to make your cross like this, this can be pretty and you can, uh, you can stick it in your bedroom, on your forehead, you can lie down with it and you know so you can either make it like this or you can either make it like this so when you're done you write your scenes you write your scenes all the way down to the cross and vertically so when you write these scenes you get you get your piece of paper and you begin to put glue in order for you to understand what i'm doing Okay, so you put the paper glue on all the pieces of paper that you're going to use. I'm going to start with pink because I'm a girl. Okay, so we're going to do the pink one. We're going to put uh, paper glue all the way to these small papers. So this pink paper will represent the blood of Jesus. I want us to take note of what will happen. Okay. So remember we're saying the blood of Jesus washes us from all these sins, from the sin of stinginess, from the sin of lying, from the sin of enviness, stealing, and all that. So I'm going to have to stick with my wax glue. I'm not using liquid glue or water glue. For now, I'm going to use my wax glue, okay? Because it's faster. So I'm going to stick these papers on my scenes. And let's see how this blood of Jesus in form of this paper will be able to cover all the sins that were seen here. Okay, so when you have when you have put your pieces of paper together and you have your glue uh, your glue stuck on the pieces of paper, you're going to stick them to your cross, depending on what shape you've made. Okay, either you've cut it like this or it's just on a plain paper, you're going to stick these papers on your cross. So let's do this together. So I'm going to get these papers that I've, I've put glue on and stick them on my cross like that. Okay, I hope you're trying this at home. It's very easy. It's very easy. Just make sure your papers have glue on them. Okay? So, you stick. Remember to cover all the scenes. All the scenes that you wrote, you cover them with these small pieces of paper. Okay? So, this is how I'm doing mine. Okay? Okay, so if you're watching at home, you can try this anytime. You can get any piece of paper, any color of piece of paper. Just make sure this cross looks car colorful so that you're able to even stick them in your room. Okay, so this is how I'm sticking mine. I'm almost done and we're good to go. Okay. This is easy. You just need three things. 
uh, manila pepper, plain white pepper, and your pepper glue, and we're good to go. Okay. You have to make it as pretty as you can possibly uh, be. This is my cross. Don't laugh. This is my cross. Okay? So let's try making this cross at home and let's see how best it works. Done. Okay. So I can have this cross right here so remember we're saying the blood of Jesus covers our sins the blood of Jesus washes us and makes us as white as snow so what happens with the blood of Jesus is that when we sin when we lie when we steal when we sting when we have all these sins we become very dirty, very dirty, okay? So now, when we pray for forgiveness, we ask for forgiveness from the, from the Lord, He sends His blood, the blood that was shed on the cross to come and cleanse in us and make us as pure as we can be. So this is the blood of Jesus. Okay, my cross. Okay, so what will happen? Remember, I had two pieces of paper. One paper which had all these sins. These are the sins. This is how you look when you appear before God. Okay, you appear lying, you appear stinging, you appear criticizing others, you appear with bitterness, and you also appear with envy, uh, greedy, evil thoughts, and pride before Him. And whenever we pray, these sins hinder our prayers because we are very dirty. As you can see, these pieces of, uh, this piece of paper has a lot of things written on them. And this hinders prayer. And every time we pray, there is these things that come to mind and just say, I think, I think, I think. So when the blood of Jesus um, was shed on the cross, this is what happened. This is our sin. And when the blood of Jesus, I want you to notice something. I want you to notice something. What the blood of Jesus did on the cross, okay? Remember, the blood of Jesus covers our sins. I want to cover completely this sin, okay? Right here. Okay, so when you look at this paper, it has all these things written. But when you look at this paper, it has these, these things, the pink, pink manila paper covering these things. So you can no longer see these things. You can only see the pink, uh, uh, pink and white paper, meaning this is the blood of Jesus. All these papers here are representing the blood of Jesus. So when the blood of Jesus is upon your life, it covers you. It covers you from these sins. Now you can no longer appear like this before the presence of God, but you appear like this, as pure as this. Okay, so thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Always thank him for the blood because this blood makes us as pure as we can possibly be. And like this, we're done. Thank you and have a blessed day. Bye. And finally, we'll be having the lesson coming from Teacher Ruth Simwanza. Thank you. Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Kingdom Kids. We're glad to have you this Sunday, and we hope that you will enjoy today's lesson. Today, we're looking at the blood. The blood of Jesus. I know that in the past week, you were looking at the cross, and um, you looked at um, Jesus' crucifixion, how he was uh, crucified and buried. But today we want to focus on the blood and what that means for you and me. But before we go into our lesson for the day, let's put our hands together 
close our eyes and pray and just ask that God will open up our hearts and our minds that we'll be able to hear from his word and understand that which he wants us to learn. Let's pray. So our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to be alive today and to hear from your word. We pray that you will be with us open up our hearts and our minds that we will receive your word and help us all oh God to share this with our friends and our neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. So my name is Auntie Ruth and today I'll be sharing about the blood. So before we go into our lesson, I'll ask that we turn our Bibles. I hope you all sitting with your Bibles. Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And if you don't know where Ephesians is, it's in the New Testament. So please um, scroll to your Bibles and go to the book of Ephesians. We will read verse 7 and verse 8. And at the end of the lesson, I will ask you who remembers what our verse for today is. So if you are ready, we will read. One, two, three, let's read together. For by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are set free. And that is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such a large measure. God has given us this grace and you and me can be here and can be happy today because God loves us so much and he gave us his son Jesus to die on that cross for us and when he died he shed so much blood you know that the day he was crucified he was punished he was beaten he was whipped by the soldiers and he bled so much so much blood was flowing from his body you know they even put a crown of thorns on his head and when those thorns pricked him the blood began to flow on his face and on his body and everywhere he was whipped with those um, whips blood would come out but that blood is what washed away our sins. So we are grateful to God for that, even though it's such a gruesome and terrible thing to think about. That blood is what has washed away our sins and you and me can proudly say today that we are children of God because of what the Lord did for us on the cross of Calvary. Okay, someone may ask, but why blood? Why not water? Why not soap? I can still wash my sins with soap and water and be a child of God. No, 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 no. The Bible tells us that there is no forgiveness of sins without the flowing of the blood of Jesus. So we need to understand that all those bad things that we do, all those things that don't please God, can only be forgiven when we ask for Christ to come into our lives and we accept that his blood is what washes away our sins. Now you will ask me, what is sin? I know some of you already know, I can see some of you smiling, so you know what sin is. But for those of us who don't know, I will tell you, sin is anything that we say, anything that we think, or anything that we do that doesn't please God. You know God hates sin. God hates sin so much that he does not want to look at it. And that's why when he sent Jesus to come on earth to live with us and to die on the cross, it was for him to take our place. Otherwise, you and me should have been the ones punished. But because God loved us so much, he didn't want us to feel that pain. He didn't want us to feel neglected. So he instead sent Jesus in human form to come and live on earth and to come and die a sinner's death. That wasn't nice. That wasn't nice. Watching someone being beaten until they bleed to death and then they're hung on a cross to die, that wasn't nice. But guess what? Jesus did it for you and for me because he loves us so much. 
So before I continue, I will ask that you sit back and relax and watch this film that will explain a little bit more about the blood of Jesus and our memory verse for today. So sit, relax, and enjoy. Jesus was going around doing the work God had sent him to do, healing people, <laughs> and teaching them all about the kingdom of God. But the Pharisees and Sadducees thought Jesus was getting too popular, so they had him arrested in the middle of the night. Oh no! What did they do to him? They asked him a lot of questions. Are you the Son of God? Do you think you are equal to God? Jesus didn't say anything, but the religious leaders didn't care if he answered or not. They accused him anyway. He is guilty of blasphemy! 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 Blasphemy? What does that even mean? Blasphemy is when someone says untrue things about God. The Pharisees and Sadducees accused Jesus of saying he was God. According to the Pharisees and Sadducees, there was only one way a person could pay for that. What was it? Going to jail? No, death. No! There was a problem for the Pharisees and Sadducees, though. What? Even if the Pharisees and Sadducees said Jesus was guilty, they weren't allowed to kill anyone. Only Roman leaders could do that. So they took him to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Wait, what? Pancho the Pilate? Not a Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And when he saw Jesus and his accusers, he was a little confused. <laughs> Are they upset? <laughs> What have you done that has made everyone so angry? Again, Jesus didn't say anything. So Pilate turned to the religious leaders and said, I don't see anything wrong with this man. Well, according to our rules, he needs to die. Now, Pilate had a problem. Hmm, Jesus doesn't deserve to die. But, but if he gets more popular, I don't want the Pharisees and Sadducees to complain about me to the other Roman leaders. So, what did he do? He thought there was only one way to keep his job as Roman governor. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, bring me some water. I wash my hands of this situation. This is not my fault. So, Pilate ordered that Jesus be killed on a wooden cross. Because... According to our laws, he deserves to die. <gasps> that is so sad. Jesus didn't deserve to die on the cross. No, he didn't. But he went to the cross anyway. And as he was dying, he continued to show love and mercy by saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The sky turned very dark. And Jesus said, It is finished. Jesus died. Then the ground began to shake, and a Roman guard standing nearby said, This man must have been the Son of God. But where were the disciples? All of Jesus' friends. His mother was with him, and a few of his friends. The others probably didn't know what to think. How could Jesus be the Messiah, the blessing for the whole world, if he wasn't even alive? Jesus had done some amazing things while he was living. Like lots of miracles. That's right. Stop! And he'd shown everyone that God the Father was very loving and good and powerful. He had also promised that the kingdom of God was near. He'd given everyone a taste of that kingdom through those miracles. 
what's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is when the whole world will be made new again, the way God had always wanted it to be. Jesus promised that someday in the kingdom of God there will be no sin or sadness or sickness or death. What is sin again? Sin is when we ignore God and go our own way. Sin is when we say, I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it my way. And remember, because God is good and sin is bad, the price we pay for our sin is being apart from God. Oh, so in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin or sadness or sickness. In the kingdom of God, there will be nothing to be afraid of, not even death. But Jesus had just died. Ah, so it seemed like none of those promises were coming true. But that was not the case. Really? What do you mean? You see, something more amazing was happening that Jesus' enemies didn't realize. When he died on the cross, Jesus took all of our sin on himself. He did? You see, since our sin turns us away from God, there can be no sin in the kingdom of God. So, Jesus had to fix the problem of sin. And he did that by dying on the cross? Yes. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Yours, mine, everyone's. Wow! Jesus really loves us. He sure does. But... Another question? What about all the things that he said about the kingdom? I still don't get it. If Jesus was dead, how could any of those promises come true? That's a really good question. With an even better answer. Because he didn't stay dead. Welcome back, boys and girls. Thank you so much for paying attention. And I hope you've been able to see now and understand that without the blood of Jesus, you and I would not be here today. Our sins can only be forgiven when we ask Jesus into our lives and ask him to wash us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Now, I've talked so much about sin and you may be wondering, what is this sin that can separate us from God? Why are we talking so much about sin? And you may ask, what are those things that will qualify to be sin? So I talked about anything that we say. So with our mouths, we can actually lie. Telling what we call half truths. There's no such thing as a half truth. If it is not true, it is a lie. And guess what? That is a sin. And God doesn't like children who lie. Stealing is something we do with our hands. And even our feet will take us to that place to go and steal something. Even that is bad. God does not like that. So boys and girls, you should not steal. You should not lie. And the last thing I'll mention, fighting. We like pinching friends and kicking and just doing things that are bad to our friends. God doesn't like that. And there are worse things like killing, um, you know, which, which I will not mention because I don't expect you and me to do that. But people do that and all those bad things are put in that category of sin. God doesn't like that. And sin will take us far away from God. He doesn't want to look at sin. So guess what? He will not want to look at us because we keep sinning. But remember I said God loves us so much and he sent Jesus to come and die on the cross once and for all. He will not come back to die again for us. He did it once and for all on the cross of Calvary. And with that, we can come back boldly to his throne 
kneel down and ask God to forgive us for all those bad things that we do that are called sin. So sin will separate you from God. So stop sinning, stop doing those things that will make you a bad child and take you away from God. Sin will bring guilt. So if we're going to steal from our friend and then, you know, the next day we see our friend, we'll start running away from them because we're guilty. Maybe they'll see or they'll remember that I stole something from them. So I'm now not only separating myself from God, but I'm also separating myself from my friends. But you know, the worst thing is that when we sin, we allow the devil to have room in our hearts. And when the devil starts to have room in your heart, oh, you become such a bad person. Nobody will want to talk to you. So let's not allow the devil to dwell in our hearts. In fact, the Bible tells us to resist or to run away from the devil. And you may ask, but how? We don't know what the devil looks like. The devil, we've never seen him. These same things we are talking about that uh, are sin are caused by the devil. So when you get a temptation to want to fight, run away. If you don't know how to stop fighting, ask your teacher, your auntie, your parents to help you to resist fighting or the urge to fight. If the temptation to steal comes, run away. Don't go and pick something and then come back and say, because I'm a child of God. No, 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 no. A child of God does not steal. A child of God does not fight. A child of God should not lie. A child of God should just never do bad things that are called sin. So God decided that he wanted you and me to be close to him, to live in heaven with him. And while we are here on earth, we have a role to play. So let's give our lives to God. If there are bad things that we're doing, let's ask Jesus to forgive us. Remember, only his blood can cleanse us from our sins. Only his blood can make us whole. We've read from Ephesians 1 verse 7 and 8, and it tells us, for by the blood of Jesus, we are set free. So if we do not ask Jesus to come into our hearts and ask that his blood cleanses us, it doesn't matter how many times you bath with that lovely soap of yours. It doesn't matter how many times you cry and say sorry. It doesn't matter how many times you wash yourself. Only the blood of Jesus can set you free and make you a child of God. So, I will pray a prayer and ask, in case there is one of us who does not know Jesus and we are in that group of children who do bad things, who are stealing and lying and fighting, we will ask God to come into our hearts and forgive us of all the sins that we have committed. And when we are done with this prayer, don't feel shy to go out and tell your neighbor that Jesus now lives in your heart and you're a changed person. And in this month of evangelism where we are all going out and sharing the word of God, go and tell somebody about God's love for you. Go and tell somebody about the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, they will also want to know what this thing is that you have that has changed you. Because they're going to see, oh, Ruth doesn't fight anymore. Ruth doesn't steal anymore. They'll know that Jesus lives in, in your heart. So boys and girls, let's close our eyes and pray and just ask Jesus to wash our sins with his blood and so that we can become children of God. So shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for today. Thank you that you love us, that you love us so much that you could send your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. And even as he died, he shed his blood. And yes, even as we have learned that only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from our sins, we pray and ask that the blood of Jesus can wash away our sins today. We ask that Jesus will live in our hearts and make us good boys and girls. And that from today onwards, we will live like your children and we will go out everywhere and share the good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you've prayed that prayer, believe now that Jesus has washed away your sins, Jesus loves you, and you will no longer sin again. 
In the name of Jesus, we have prayed and I hope that you've enjoyed your lesson today. And if you have any questions, we'll be back next week again with another lesson so that you can grow in the word of God and just become better children of God. Bye. See you next week. Thank you.